In a tiny corner of IFA's so-called sustainability village, a small group of volunteers were asked here to encourage visitors to make do and mend. It's working. It's working. It's working. Ingo used to be an electrician, and when he retired, he occupied himself by fixing everything at home. Then he set up his own repair cafe, where volunteers breathe new life into broken electronics. In Germany, the uh, awareness of longevity of articles is growing and of repairability. People want to repair. The younger generation uh, is rather uh, uh, looking for latest technology, latest design, and rather prefers to buy new. I'm not criticizing that, but I'm saying um, in terms of um, interest in repairing something, it's more prone in the older generation. Have you repaired many things while you've been here, Ethan? Actually, five or six only. Who comes to an exhibition with a broken vacuum cleaner? <laughs> or a vacuum? Well, there might not be any vacuum cleaners so far, but Sebastian has brought his mum's blood pressure monitor. It didn't uh, compress the arm anymore. We decided to buy a new one and it wasn't that reliable. Um, so, so my mother trusted in this device and she wanted this to be repaired. And, and uh, luckily I found this place where um, they found the right solution. So she'll be happy, uh, environment will be happy. So, another happy customer. But there is a reason that the repair cafe is run by volunteers. The labour cost of repairing these small items means that operations like this aren't usually commercially viable. This is an item of 20 euros. Mm. The phone is an item of six, 800 euros. But they're difficult to repair. They're difficult to repair, uh, but there, if you then spend 30 euros to open the unit, mm. you can say, yeah, this is worth it, I want to keep my phone. Mm. For this unit, it's not worth it because it's more than, than the new one. Uh, so we have, we're in this niche uh, where the professional shops cannot really help. But in the future, legislation could help make it easier and cheaper to fix our goods than it is to buy new ones. In March this year, the EU proposed a law that requires more products to be more easily repairable even after their warranty has expired. And some European countries are already trying to encourage repair. France is leading the way quite a bit there. Um, they have got this very interesting um, repairability index showing with a figure from 1 to 10 how repairable your product is. As a citizen, you can think, do I want this because it's only a one? Or, you know, do I think I'm going to go for the other one that's, you know, a lot more repairable, which will make it last longer and be more worth my money? I think there's a lot that we can do ourselves to, you know, make choices that are actually more beneficial for ourselves, especially in times when life is just expensive. Mm -hmm. I think we tend to sort of think a bit short term in terms of investment and, and living more sustainably. But if we think about it a bit more long term, that's much more in our own advantage. Paying a bit more for higher quality can be uh, a lot less expensive. A laptop is better than a desktop because it's smaller, so it's used less material, less impact. Also, it will lose less of your energy. Whether tech companies do give us more sustainable products may be a reflection on how much pressure we and governments put on them. And given the importance of repair, I wonder if these guys will be given a bigger stall at IFA next year. <laughs>